Hola estudiantes! Welcome to the first video of a series of videos that I've created in hopes of helping you not only just survive Spanish this year, but start to build confidence and enjoy the learning process. If you enjoy it, then perhaps learning languages will be something you build in to your life journey. If you don't enjoy learning, what are we doing here? So this is really my, my best effort using technology, which I didn't rely on very much pre-pandemic, but since March, I have been on fire. Okay, so that was cool, right? But I have been on fire to learn as much as I can, as fast as I can, of how to make technology feel like we're still in the same room how to use technology to still make it make learning fun, make it engaging, make it interactive. And this is my maxed out best attempt um, to create that type of learning environment for us during these times of uncertainty. For however long it will be, I wanna make videos fun, informative, helpful, so you feel like you have like an in-home tutor to help you along the way. This first video I'm really excited about because it talks about how Spanish originated, what influenced it, where it spread to, and how it's still relevant today. So that as you're studying Spanish, you have that background information to appreciate the language more and um, to come into with, an, with a more educated approach to its relevance. Um, you will see just how relevant it is the facts speak for themselves. I'm just gonna give you the information. In all of these videos, please have a comp book so that you can take notes with me. That will help with two things, maybe more, but the two that come to mind are help keep you engaged, keep you focused, and then help with the retention of the information so that you can go back and study it later and the process of writing as I go will help it lock it away in that spongy brain where we're just gonna be absorbing as much as we can together through these videos. So grab that notebook and let's go head to the whiteboard. Here we go. Hola, que tal? This is a brief history of the Spanish language. We're gonna look at just some major bullet points. You could spend a lot of time diving deeper into each of these time periods. I'm just gonna provide you with a basic overview. So Spanish, like French, Romanian, Portuguese, Catalan, Italian, is a romance language. These are grouped together. So they have a lot in common. They all evolved from spoken Latin from the Roman Empire. This is a map I drew, and it represents a time period of the third century BC. This is current day Spain, previously the Iberian Peninsula, current day Italy, and you'll see in green here, I've drawn a route. This is from the Second Punic War to show um, marches and battles and how you could see that this contact of different people in different regions brought languages together. It's not uncommon, even back then, for someone in this area of the world to be multilingual, and that is a trait that continues in Europe today due to closer proximity to one another and just sometimes what happens naturally when you have that contact, when you're not isolated by distance. In addition to the wars that occurred that brought the blending of languages, there was also trade as well. You'll notice here that Africa is situated in very close proximity to Spain. And we'll be looking at how the languages of the Moors also had a major influence in Castellano. Feel free at this point to press pause if you need more time to write down these notes and perhaps draw a sketch to have a visual of the influencers of Castellano.
So how did Castellano, or the Spanish from Spain, continue to evolve? Well, during 711 to 1492, the Moors ruled Spain. And with that brought the Arabic language. And so there are roughly 4,000 words in Castellano that originate from Arabic. In addition to the language, the Moors also brought more advanced architecture, irrigation system, and had Cordoba in Spain as the center for scholars to come to advance in math and science and medicine. Let's draw a map now of Spain to look at how the languages shift over a period of time. Okay, so here's my rough draft of Spain. So at the time when Moors ruled Spain, as a result, like I had mentioned before, Arabic was the spoken language of this major zone of Spain with the other Romance languages of Spain along the northern region. With Galician, Leonese, Castellano or Castilian, Basque, Aragonese, and lastly, Catalan, all along the northern region. To highlight the amount of different languages here, and add some color. So this would represent around the time of the year 1000. Pay attention now what happens as I draw a second map in particular to Castilian, Castellano, as the dominant language that later then spreads to the Americas. All right, so let's watch a transition. Now, I'm gonna show you some arrows of what's gonna be happening and then I'll show the final effect. So, during the time period when the Moors ruled, again, Arabic, hence, was the dominant language. However, with 1492, as the Spaniards expelled the Moors from the land, well, either expelled them or converted them to Christianity, all of these languages pushed downward by gaining territories, and as they pushed downward, later Castilian, Castellano, pushed outward. So that over the span of a thousand years, we have Castilian now dominating this language, Galician remaining as a spoken language in the northwestern region of Spain, Portuguese arriving, spoken in Portugal. So in current day Spain, you'll see it's still multilingual. Leonese and Aragonese is a very, very small population that still speaks those languages. But Catalan is prominent in Catalonia. And so that is a bilingual area of Spain. A lot of people in Catalan really have their identity associated with the ability 
to speak that language and to teach it to future generations. Similar in Basque and Galicia. And the reason you might be asking yourself, why did Castilian be the language that then dominated Spain and got sent to the New World? And the reason behind that was in the, the union of Isabel de Castilla with Ferdinand of Aragon that Castilla was granted the monopoly of political dominance and in charge of funding the explorers or the conquistadores to cross the great seas in search of gold, glory, minerals, and the spread of Christianity. This union, which occurred in 1469, the marriage brought Castilla and Aragon together to gain power, and this is often looked at by scholars as the monumental moment of Spain gaining power, expelling the Moors, and then with new energy and resources that aren't being depleted on an internal war, they were able to look outward in hopes of expanding their empire in other territories. So this is a crucial union marriage when looking at how Spain expanded to the new world. Now, what type of union was this? Well, many believe this was not the kind that, for example, if you were out getting a frozen yogurt and you got your favorite flavor and someone walks in and you are just in love and you feel easy queasy in your stomach and you no longer even hungry for your frozen yogurt, which has your favorite sprinkles on top, but it doesn't matter because you are love struck. Many believe it was not that, but it was a very intentional union to gain power and dominate. Oh, I see you dozing off there in the back. Is it time for a stretch break? I'm ready for a stretch break too. I think I'm gonna head out outside, do some cartwheels to show you how excited I am for this school year. So from 1492 through the 1800s, this is known as the Spanish colonial period when Spain took over territories in the Americas. In a later lecture, we'll focus on where those territories are, the names of them, so you know how many countries now officially have Spanish as their language. This lecture wouldn't be complete to not address the costs that occur when an empire looks to expand its power. Along with the spread of Spanish was the spread of Eurasian diseases, which depleted, some may argue, up to 90% of the population during the colonial period. And this is so ironic to be talking about that point right now because the very purpose of me recording this video is because I can't be in the classroom with you due to a pandemic. But it's important to know that with greed and dominance comes the cost of lives, comes the cost of cultures, indigenous languages, forced labor, innocent deaths. And if we don't talk about the non-glorious parts of history, then we risk repeating these over and over and not finding better ways to grow and coexist. So I challenge you and I challenge myself to do better. During the 1800s, there was a movement in the Americas towards independence. Do in large to the many social and political and 
financial injustices under colonial rule. Currently, Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world by native speakers. Additionally, 75 million people speak Spanish as a second language. Currently in the United States, 43 million people speak Spanish as a native language, which is roughly 13% of the U.S. population. Additionally, not to a surprise to any of you, I'm sure, Spanish is the most studied second language in the United States with roughly 12 million bilingual speakers. In terms of the relevance of learning Spanish in the United States, the United States has the second most Spanish speakers in the world after Mexico, if including the population that speaks Spanish as a second language. That means with native and second language learners of Spanish, the United States has more people speaking Spanish than Argentina, Colombia, or even Spain where it originated. Fascinante. Now we looked at the beginning of this lecture on the outside external influences of Castellano, but how does Castellano or Spanish continue to evolve in modern day? Mostly you'll see through loan words during the colonial period, there were food items or spices that had never existed in Spain. And so words needed to be created in order to talk about these objects such as chocolate. So a lot of words became loan words from indigenous languages. In the modern day world, you'll see a lot of coming from English for new technology, such as iPad, Hacer click, which is to click the mouse, iPhone, and any other new inventions, since they didn't exist before at the time of Castellano, loan words are being used in English for speaking about technology. So why study Spanish? Here's some things to think about. In particular, if you have trepidation for, about the language or you haven't had good experiences in the past, I just want to put some information out there for you to consider. To learn a language, I'm going to be reading this quote so that I get it verbatim is to have one more window have one more window from which to look at the world from which to look at the world This is from a Chinese proverb. I love this quote and I believe it to be true in my experiences and in my travels. A second favorite quote I have in regards to learning languages is, and I'll read this as well to get it verbatim. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. That goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, That goes to his heart. Nelson Mandela.
I hope that my video series on speaking Spanish with native speakers, which many are close friends of mine that I've met around the world, shows you that in fact this is true, that you're able to make a true connection when you speak someone's native language. And a final quote, and this is not just for Spanish or languages, but learning in general, which I feel is suitable to start a school year, is learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Chinese proverb. In addition to these inspirational quotes that keep me going and keep me voted, motivated to continue to teach and learn myself, there are some practical reasons to pursue languages. One, since we talked about how Spanish is so widely spoken within the United States and across the world, this gives you an ability to communicate, to travel, to make connections, to feel more at home, away from home, in Spanish-speaking countries. So truly that ability to build relationships and to feel like the world is your oyster. Two, many, many studies argue or have proven that learning languages improves your cognitive skills, your ability to concentrate, your ability to listen well, memorization, memory as you go through life, and critical thinking skills. And three, there are more, but it's that time in this video. <laughs> These are the ones that I like the most. So the third is the U.S. job market. In recent years, the amount of workplaces seeking bilingual speakers because of the increasing global market has more than doubled. So regardless of whichever professional pursuits may be in your horizon, knowing a second language can only help you. It is work. It's a journey, and it's one I invite you to explore for life. So thank you, muchas gracias, for joining me on day one. Future videos will be in the target language more, but this was so informational that I was delivered in English, but I will have a more immersion experience in future videos to expose you to the language as we learn different topics. Hasta luego.